What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at my new home theater seats. This is the Valencia Tuscany Luxury Console Edition. Before I jump into my thoughts and initial impressions of this sofa, I just want to say this is not a sponsored review. I see a lot of talk about this company working with YouTubers for reviews, but unfortunately my channel is nowhere near large enough to work with them. So with that being said, everything in this video is 100% my own opinion and coming from someone who actually purchased this sofa on their own. So long story short, I had an old recliner I bought for probably 800 bucks. It was good for a few years, but since it was made of a pleather material and not actually real leather, it started peeling in about four years. It was originally a gray recliner, but by the time I had it for six years, it looked like a cow print with brown spots everywhere from where the material peeled off. I tried to keep my home theater space nice and clean, but that recliner was just an eyesore in the middle of everything. I've always seen Valencia seats and wanted one, but honestly, the price tag always made me hesitant. I almost bought a recliner from Costco for like two grand or something like that, but it was also the same fake leather material, so ultimately I decided against it. Yes, it would be nice for a while, but eventually I'll just end up in the same spot of having a beat down and peeled up sofa. So earlier this year, I had said something about leaning toward getting the nicer seats and my wife said something along the lines of she agrees and that I should just get them. And if you're someone who has a home theater, you'll know it's not likely your wife is on board with an expensive purchase. So basically that was the tipping point to finally pull the trigger and order the sofa I have here, which again, is the Valencia Tuscany Luxury Console Edition. They also have a cheaper model of this sofa, but that one has the glossy leather, which I'm not a fan of. So I decided to spend a little extra and just go with this luxury edition instead. So from ordering to receiving it, it probably took about three to four weeks. The company that delivered it was called T-Force. They left me a voicemail a few days before this arrived to schedule delivery. And that was honestly a horrible process. I called and they put me on hold for about 20 minutes and it sounded like someone answered and just hung up the phone. I wasn't about to go through that again, so I called back the next day. Again, they put me on hold and I waited for 22 minutes until they finally answered and we scheduled delivery for a few days later. So all in all, I waited on hold for 45 minutes just to speak to someone and do a call that took under a minute. At this point, I was sure it was going to be a horrible experience dealing with their company, but fortunately that was not the case. On delivery day, the driver gave me a call and said I was closer to his route, so if I wanted, he could deliver it much earlier. That actually worked out better for me, so I accepted it and that went very smoothly and he even moved them to the back of the house where I wanted them. The model I ordered is the console edition, which gets delivered in three separate boxes. One of them, which is the center seat, was much lighter at only 75 pounds, so me and my wife carried this one up the stairs and into the basement no problem. The other two, however, were much heavier at 139 pounds each, so we definitely struggled with those. It was still quite the chore to get it down the stairs, but it was a lot easier to open up the box and take the top and bottom pieces down separately. So if you can swing it, I definitely recommend spending a little extra and just getting the white glove delivery service. Hauling all of this up the stairs into my house and then again down into my basement was not an easy task. And if I had to do it over, I would have gladly given my money away and just let the workers do the work while I relax. So getting this set up was pretty easy and took about 30 minutes in total. You simply had to connect the seat back to the bottom portion of the seat and then connect a few wires. Once you have the three seats assembled, you have a few hinges at the side of every seat and you simply slide these together so they all click and lock into place to form a three seat recliner. All right, so now that we got delivery and setup out of the way, let's dive into the features of this sofa, what I like and what I don't like. So taking a look at the seat itself, this is their Tuscany Luxury Console Edition. It has a total of three seats, but only the left and right have all of the features and the center one is just a regular seat. As you can see, this one only has arms at each end similar to a sofa, while their actual three seat setups have arms next to every seat, which in the end adds about 10 inches of extra width. In the middle of my room, I have these two beams, so that's why I chose this one as it's just a better fit for my room. A cool feature this seat has is the center seat also flips down to convert into a console, which has a nice large tray, cup holders, two adjustable reading lights on top, and a compartment which has outlets and USB ports inside. 
This console may not look that big on camera, but once you are sitting here, it actually puts a huge space between both seats. When I first got it, my wife was sitting on the other side and with the console down, it seriously made me feel like she was sitting way on the other side of the room. I got used to it now, but if you're coming from a love seat with a smaller console in the middle, it's definitely quite an adjustment. So there was one part I didn't like about buying this console edition. While I like having three seats instead of two, I didn't like the idea of having to sacrifice an armrest when the third seat was in use. Thankfully, Valencia does carry an accessory I bought which solves that problem. So this here is their armrest attachment. I wasn't sure what to expect when ordering this as their website doesn't have many photos or details on it, but it's definitely a lot higher quality than I thought it would be. Coming to the top, it has a removable cup holder. Then opening this here, you also have a nice size storage compartment, which is also wrapped in velvet. At the bottom, it has this large piece of wood that's wrapped in velvet as well. And basically this entire thing just sticks in between the seats and converts this sofa into a single seat with a love seat next to it. So beside being an extra armrest, another benefit is this gives the third person sitting here a place to put their drink where without it, they would just be stuck holding it in their hand or placing it somewhere else. In my opinion, if you end up purchasing a console edition like I have here, this is definitely a must buy accessory. So as I said earlier, this is their luxury edition, which has a few extra features compared to their regular non-luxury edition. The most important for me was that this comes with a matte leather. In my opinion, this just looks so much better compared to the traditional shiny leather sofa. Looking at their specs, this is what they call matte, super supple, semi-aniline, Italian Napa leather. What that means, I really don't know, but they're right that this is super soft and supple and honestly feels like a leather seat that you will find in a nice luxury car. The seats also have this diamond stitch pattern on it, which really helps it feel and look very premium as well. So taking a look at the controls here at the side, this is packed with quite a few different features. First, we have the regular reclining function. Next, we have the power adjustable lumbar support. And then lastly, we have a power adjustable headrest. Like I said earlier, this feels like someone took car seats out of a luxury vehicle and just turned it into a home theater recliner. So after having this seat for about two weeks now, I don't think I can go back to a regular cheapy recliner. This seat is more on the firm side, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. To clarify, you don't really sink in like you do on some sofas, but instead it's comfortable, but stays nice and supportive at the same time. Coming back to the controls here, you can tap this H button to turn on or change the color of the lights on this seat. You can choose from seven different colors and the LEDs are on the cup holder and then along the bottom of the seats as well. These are a nice effect when you're just hanging out, but if you have a projector like I do, I would definitely recommend turning them off as it is bright enough to affect the picture. Turning them off is also very simple as well. You simply double click the H button and it'll turn off all the lights on your side of the seat. Next, you have this I button, which is your memory button. Once again, similar to a car, this has memory seats. So once you find a combination of the recliner, lumbar support, and headrest that you like most, you simply hold this down and it'll save those settings. So this way, the next time you sit down and wanna enjoy your movie, instead of having to mess with all three settings, you simply press that and it'll move and set everything for you all on its own. Then when you wanna get up, instead of having to adjust all three of them again, you simply hold down the H button and that will return the entire seat to its home position. Lastly, here on the controller here, you also have a USB-A and USB-C port to charge your phone or tablet while you sit. The only thing I don't like about the position of these ports is if you have any device at all, such as a computer or a car USB port, if you look around the port, there is always a bunch of tiny scratches from the cord rubbing around the surrounding area. I really don't want those marks here on the sofa, and I know I will definitely be careful not to do it, but I can't say the same for my wife or kids. I haven't told them yet, but I most likely tell them not to use these ports. I'd rather give them the inconvenience of having to use a power bank than have a ton of tiny scratches that'll drive me insane. All right, so moving on to the storage compartments that you have here on both armrests, these things are just huge. It's great that they are big enough to hold lots of items, but it's also a bit inconvenient at the same time. So the first week I got this sofa, I came down here to watch a movie and spent about 30 minutes going crazy trying to find the remote. 
I checked inside this armrest, which is where I always put it, but it wasn't in there, so I went searching around the entire room. After all the searching, I ended up checking in here again, but this time feeling around with my hand, and sure enough, the remote was in there the entire time. The combination of the Shield TV remote being a small triangle shape and then this compartment being so big and dark, I just couldn't see it hiding at the side. So if someone at Valencia Company ends up watching this video, I will propose two ideas to fix this problem. One would be to install a small light that is mounted somewhere here at the side so this lights up the compartment. The second one which I would like the most and would not require you to redesign the seat would simply be to add an insert similar to what car armrests have. This way you can have the deep area at the bottom for your larger items, then a smaller tray that sits on top to place your remotes and other items you grab often. In case someone doesn't get what I'm saying, I'll also throw up a clip of my car armrest so you can see what I mean as well. Lastly, you have very nice metal cup holders which are removable as well. Then there's this little circle here which is used to attach accessories such as their table or wine holder. I don't have any of them yet, but I definitely plan to pick up some soon or maybe just hit my wife and hopefully she'll purchase them instead. I was a bit hesitant to spend this kind of money for something I'd just be sitting on, but given how much time me and my family spend down here, this was 100% worth the money. It's not perfect, but honestly the issues I have with it are very minor and do not take away from how much we all love these seats. Anyone who comes over is just as impressed as I am and says the same thing of how this feels like a nice car seat I stuck inside my house. If you've owned nice seats before, then this might not be as impressive to you, but if you're someone like me who is coming from cheaper, not so premium seats, then this is a complete night and day difference in both features and comfort. All right, well that about wraps up my initial overview and first impressions of this seat. I'll definitely be back in six months or so to give you an update and let you know if I had any issues or notice more things I like or dislike about this seat. Until then, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.